It's William here, the Bangkok voice coach, and I knew Enya before she was famous. And this is my story. The music business can be rather cruel, as we all know, and it can uh, chew you up and spit you out and leave you on the side of the pavement if you're not careful. Enya was brilliantly looked after from the very early days of her career, and this has been this has been vital to her success. Not many people know Enya. I think it's kind of acknowledged that she's rather private and um, sometimes you even hear the word reclusive. Um, she lives in a big castle now in South County Dublin and it's surrounded by high walls and uh, wonderful views down to the Kalini Beach and up to Brayhead and she lives there alone from, from, from what we know and she is uh, rather um, publicity shy. Or, or let's just say she's not really that interested in publicity. And I knew Enya when I was 17. I spent a year going back and forward to her house where she lived with Nicky Ryan, her producer, and Roma Ryan, his wife. And we, uh, we went there every, twice a week sometimes and out into the back of the little house and into the recording studio or the basically it was a shed that had uh, some recording equipment and pianos and things and we spent evenings uh, making music and Enya was just around about 26 I would say uh, she was maybe a little bit older 27 she was absolutely stunning me and my friend who played the saxophone, we both used to come out of the house going, she's so beautiful. I mean, she really was. Her eyes were just like absolutely stunning, dazzling. And her lovely, she had like a page boy haircut. And she was so quiet. She's very smiley and everything, but quite reserved. And I was playing the keyboards. I just won this competition in Ireland for a young composer. And I was kind of spotted in that and asked to come along. Uh, I, I never really felt I got to know her. And uh, we recorded music in Windmill Lane. And we did her first and I think possibly only ever like full length gig. It was at the National Stadium in Dublin. And she was so unnerved by the whole thing. She wasn't an extrovert. So getting out onto a stage and being kind of like pushy and it wasn't really her thing. Uh, I, I, I thought she was absolutely gorgeous and the music was beautiful, but I couldn't really see where it would go. And it was at a time, you know, in the 80s in, in Dublin when uh, it was a very tough place to be. Uh, and, um, you know, we didn't really get any payment from from them because from from Enya because um you know there wasn't much money around and she was just she was just trying to make some music and her producer Nikki believed in her so much that he had kind of taken this big risk on his career he was a sound engineer he'd given up a lot of the projects that did make him money and he believed so much in Enya that he was going to focus in on her and he, she moved in and they became this really tight unit where they were just so focused on on the music. What was extraordinary was that I went off to uh, to live in London. I went to university in London and then I saw on the, not very long, maybe a few years later, I saw she had a number one hit on the television, you know, with this song. When I heard it, I thought, I don't recognize that song, like from Enya's catalogue. And I thought, that doesn't really kind of sound like the other ones. It was much more up-tempo and a little bit kind of jazzy. And um, I thought it was more of a kind of a a radio play song, a song that could be a hit. She's always stuck to this vision that she has of the music. And But what was so lucky, sometimes in the music business, two or three things happen at the same time. Uh, time, place, right? And people. I think they're the three things. So she met Nicky Ryan, who is a genius sound engineer and producer along the lines of Phil Spector or uh, Quincy Jones, you know? He is a magician in the studio. Then he has 
his wife, she writes wonderful lyrics. She wrote the lyrics for the Lord of the Rings songs and many other songs. Uh, and then Enya has this ethereal voice, this uh, wonderful way of just of capturing an otherworldly um, quality and also beautiful melodies, right? So you get three things like that together and the right time. Something like that. I wonder would it happen now? I don't know. It's so slow paced and so meditative that I wonder now, you know, everyone's just in a hurry all the time. And do people have time for Enya, you know? But at that time, it just came along and it just fitted perfectly. It was a beautifully managed career from the beginning. Her name was Enya Neve Renon when I knew her. And that is a very big mouthful. So someone sat down and said, let's call her Enya. Well, that's what her name is. No, but let's call her Enya. No second name. And let's spell it the way you say it. Transliterate it into this. So you got a brand, then you've got music, you've got a team that is absolutely focused to the point of obsession on what they will, what they can do with this music and never giving up. She's a total perfectionist. Absolutely. We would be in the studio until four in the morning if something wasn't exactly right. Or she would go back in and she would multi-layer an other part. Because as you know, it's all the vocals are layered up and up and up and up. And as Nicky Ryan says, he will change the microphone to get a different sound quality and the whole thing. That's what I'm talking about, this wall of sound like Phil Spector. Very, very clever. And I think it's just a phenomenal achievement and it's absolutely brilliant what they did. And uh, it's just came to my mind this morning. I was thinking about it here in Bangkok and it's such a long time ago, but I've never forgotten that experience. Uh, it's a, a lesson to everyone is this lesson of determination. Don't give up. Believe in yourself and your time will come. It's William here, the Bangkok voice coach. Check in again with me soon. Bye.